morning, St. James and St. John United Church, and welcome to all those who are joining us uh, in the sanctuary today, but also who are joining us online. I want to say Happy Easter to each and every one of you, and what a wonderful celebration it is to Jesus Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Um, I was thinking the other day how we put so much emphasis on Christmas, and rightly so. But um, Easter, where would we be without his resurrection, right? Uh, well, I guess we wouldn't have eternity. So I know you join me and we just give thanks to God for, for sending us his son and for the great sacrifice that he made for us on the cross. So... I do have some announcements for you today, but first of all, on behalf of the congregation, I would like to extend our deepest sympathies to Linda Treadwell and her family on the recent passing of her brother, Roland Matthews. So Linda, I just want you to know that um, myself, uh, Reverend Alice and the church, we hold you in our prayers and we're thinking of you as you grieve this, this sad loss of your brother. Now, as far as the announcements go, I just have a couple. But uh, first of all, I wanted to mention that we are going to have communion today. So if you are joining us at home and you want to partake in communion, why not take a few moments, go get a, a little piece of bread and maybe a little glass of juice, and then you can join us and we can have communion together. Uh, thank you to all who participated in the Good Friday service. I don't want to name any names because I, I may forget someone, but I did want to mention uh, David Watling. Uh, David puts a lot of time and effort into these types of um, presentations. And uh, not only every Sunday, but uh, David was uh, setting up our lights and, you know, looking after the sound and making sure that uh, everything is uh, projected to the screen and that you're able to watch it from home as well. So thank you, David. And I also want to thank another David, uh, David Bennell, who, who came and uh, played the organ for us. He played a prelude and a postlude, and he accompanied a couple of our soloists, and he also um, played for the hymns. So thank you to David. It was certainly nice to have him join us. Now, I also wanted to mention the Sunday School presentation, the Easter presentation, and I'm so excited for you to see it today. Again, I know I've mentioned this, but Reverend Alice did a wonderful job putting it all together. But I mean, we had some really cute little um, subjects too, right? Uh, not talking about Kathy and myself, but <laughs> all the children, they did such a wonderful job. And uh, well, when you see it, uh, I'm sure you'll agree with me. Now, we will post it to both our Sunday School and uh, Church Facebook pages so that if you want to just watch it later by itself, uh, we'll have it on the Facebook pages. Now, uh, oh, many thanks to all who contributed to the uh, Easter Looney fundraiser. I, I did have a couple pe people ask me the other day if it was too late to um, give their donations, and I said, of course not. <laughs> uh, Any time is a good time to take money. So if you haven't done so and you'd like to, by all means, you can drop it off here at the church office. And I've also been receiving a number of, uh, actually quite a few uh, donations for the virtual memorial gospel concert. And um, more details will follow in the weeks to come. But thank you to everyone who is uh, uh, donating, and I've received some donations for the uh, Pandemic Relief Fund. Uh, someone named it that, so I thought that's a really good name, the Pandemic Relief Fund. So um, thank you to everyone who is contributing. I know sometimes it seems like a lot when we sent out all the, the Easter letter with the different fundraisers and the appeal, and but, you know, I thought the, the fund, uh, sorry, the... Um, I thought that the uh, finance team did a great job with the letter, uh, just kind of raising awareness to where we stand financially. And uh, we thank you, you know, um, we're in this together and we want to keep the doors open to the church and the center. So just thank you to everyone um, for all that you do. It's so, so much appreciated. Now, um, the last thing I wanted to mention was name that hymn. And I have the cutest little, um, the cutest little uh, person who guessed the hymn this past week, and it was Ava Gallant. And she was so excited. Her mom told me, Megan told me that she couldn't wait to get to the car for her mom to 
to send me a message that they guessed the hymn for this week. So it was Near the Cross, and I did have a few other people who guessed it too, but uh, Ava got to me first. So Ava um, decided on the hymn for this week, and I was like, oh, wow. She picked two lines from this hymn, and I thought, oh dear, uh, I'm going to have to learn that hymn because I don't know it very well. And lo and behold, she offered to do it. So trust me. Well, I know I don't even have to tell you this, that you know she's going to do a better job than I would have done. So in just a few moments, we're going to hear from Ava. So if you guess the hymn, please send me a message. And Ava, I know you will make her day if you guess it. So we're going to listen to Ava sing the next week's or this week's Name That Hymn. So I wasn't I wasn't kidding, right? Didn't she do a wonderful job? So um, like I said, send your messages, phone me, tell me in person, let me know. Um, Ava will be so excited. And thank you to Ava for making my life so much easier. I didn't I had a lot of things to do this week, so then I didn't have to learn that hymn. So thank you. And if ever you want to do what Ava did, hey, please, I know uh, it'll be so much more enjoyable than listening to me all the time. So um, please join me or send me a video if you guess it. You know, it would be, it'd be really nice. All right. So that's it, everyone, for Kimberly's Corner this week. And I just want to end again with saying Happy Easter. There's the phone. Happy Easter to each and every one of you. And God bless you all. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. Bye for now. Good morning, everyone, and happy Easter to you. I greet you in the, in the name of the risen Lord. Welcome, grace to you, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. It's so good to see all of you sitting in the pews, but of course, I welcome everybody who is joining us online uh, through the internet. We hope that you are going to uh, enjoy yourself. Uh, through the hymns, the prayers, and you will find it comforting to, to listen to the message of God, which today is going to be actually short, uh, because we will have a surprise for you after uh, the 
communion, we will have a little bit longer um, Easter play through Sunday school children. So we are going to give you lots of things to enjoy today. So welcome one more time. Now we have a call to worship and let us watch the video with Peyton and Harley. Call to worship. Morning has broken, but this morning is different. The birds are singing tunes of joy in the trees surrounding the graves. The flower buds are bursting in colors vibrant around each stone. We've come to visit the grave of a friend, but he is not here. The sun is rising in the east, the shadow grays turn bright. The sun is risen in our hearts in our darkness and death and in defeat. Now we understand what Christ said, what God did. Now we can proclaim, Christ is risen. Hallelujah. We knew you would love it. And please join me reading the opening prayer together. Almighty God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> this morning we have a congregational hymn, Come Now It is the time to worship. Uh, certain parts of New Brunswick are not allowed to sing. We may proceed, um, you know, not with full lung and shout, but just, you know, nicely behind your mask, please do consider uh, still there is, there are some, some dangers. So let us sing, come, now is the time to worship. We have a prayerful illumination today through the screen. So let's hear how Ethan is going to pray for us. O oh, risen Christ, open us to the power of your resurrection as we hear it proclaims anew this day that we too might rise to new life in you. Amen. Now the Bible passage is from Luke chapter 24. I will read it to you from verse 1 to 12. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In the fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the man said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself, 
what had happened. This is the word of God. Uh, whenever I read this uh, uh, passage from, from, uh, from Luke, I, I cannot say that my, my side of feminism come up, but somehow I feel a little bothering that they didn't believe that they're women because they sounded like nonsense. Like imagine I'm talking to you from this pulpit, do I sound like nonsense about the risen Lord? So anyway, I'm just, just a side note here. Um, the, the, the question today is what do you believe about Easter? And actually, I, I, I'm, I'm glad that the children must stay in the pews. You all remember, because that was a great success in Christmas season, well, on Christmas Eve, that we showed you our first video we ever made together with the Sunday school children. And <clears throat> the children, you know, at Christmas, uh, well, before Christmas, they were filmed, I mean, we, sh we, we shoot the film before green screen. And I think you all understand that the concept of green screen. Now, at that time, a few children were confused. Like, what's, what's going to happen? I thought that I'm going to be, I don't know, <laughs> uh, you know, a pastor, but there is no, no background behind me. And we tried to explain the children because the green screen means that later in my program, uh, cutting program, I will add a picture that would be fit to your story, fit to your role. So for some kids it was difficult, and then, of course, you know, they ended up uh, kind of surprised on Christmas Eve, uh, watching the video, like, wow, I was never there, and I'm there now. So, like, what happened? So this time, a couple of weeks ago, we, we shoot the film again in front of the green screen, and the children felt much more comfortable now with the green screen. So they, they played amazingly. But there was one little girl, and she, she asked me an interesting question. Uh, she asked, Reverend Alice, I do understand the concept of, of, um, of gr green screen. Well, she didn't use the word concept. That's my word. And, and she just asked this. So will you put their pictures, photographs behind us with bunnies and eggs? And I was like, you mean like if there was any bunny and egg, you know, at the empty tomb? Well, sure, there must be, right? Bunnies and eggs, they are everywhere around the world. So for the sake of the children, I placed only one picture with a bunny, a huge one. So just make happy, I mean, I, I want to make you happy. So there will be one picture. But the reason I told you this story is, the question is not if there were any bunnies or, you know, eggs around the empty tomb. But if there is an empty tomb at our commercialized Easter, you know, filled with chocolate bunnies and eggs today. It means when you think of this word Easter, the first image that comes to your mind, and I would put a bet on it even though I'm not allowed to do that as a Christian, a bunny comes to your mind and not an empty tomb, even though you are a Christian. Which means we are overwhelmed with our, you know, I don't know, the understanding of the society of, of Easter. And it is commercialized <laughs> even during a pandemic. So this is the question, and, and there are actually other questions. Therefore, if, if not the empty tomb comes to our mind, but everything else that, you know, we filled up our Easter celebration, what then do you believe about Easter? What moves uh, you to faith? Is it an Easter bunny, eggs, empty tomb, or something else? Like difficult questions, even maybe harsh, if we realize that yes, actually, uh, Alice is right. For some people, you know the empty tomb is, is enough. But for many people, and I think for most of us, 
it requires more than an empty tomb. And I'm going to prove it to you. Um, It is about readiness. Readiness means back in, in in the time of the first Easter, the women, the disciples, and the rest of the people, rest of the people who follow Jesus, what did it require for them to believe that Jesus was risen? What made them ready to believe? So first the woman and the disciples, and then we will answer that question, like, as for us. Um, 2,000 years ago, the first Easter was... <laughs> was anything but celebration. It was about sadness and defeat. You know what happened on Good Friday. Friday, Jesus was crucified. And and the followers of Jesus were shocked. This is not what they hoped for and dreamed about. They, They believed in that man that something new will come through him. And suddenly they found themselves uh, uh, in a a position where they they had to realize that something is wrong. It, it, It could not happen. No, 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 it's just a bad dream. It's a nightmare. It's interesting how grief can shadow or can cloud your mind. You all have experienced well, not the children, probably the, the adults. You all have experienced grief in your life. When, when you had to, to arrange a funeral, you had to be part of, of a grieving process, uh, and, uh, and, and later you were not able to recall what happened. You didn't even remember you know, who brought food. Somebody had to bring food, right? You must eat something, even if just like tiny little things. But... Who were those people? You don't remember. You don't even remember what day those, those things happened. Grief can overshadow our, our, our mind, our clear mind. That usually our mind, you know, is able to work. We can focus on the reality. But when we grieve, we are just way too emotional. So when, when, when those people uh, faced Friday events, uh, they, the apostles, they totally believed that the movement was gone. They, well, they didn't call at that time movement, but there were many movements, you know, in those times to make the world a better place, to make especially uh, Israelites, you know, to put them into a better position. So there they were, Judas was dead, Peter denied Jesus, and then Thomas went home, Uh, The rest of the disciples were either hiding or went back to their old profession. Like, the movement is gone. What can we do? Let's return to our old ways. And the women who followed Jesus were, of course, in despair. So they all felt that the Friday events destroyed their hopes and dreams. When you come to church and uh, you... You hear the message about Jesus. You hear my statements you know, from the pulpit that Jesus is our Savior. Don't be afraid. Don't be scared. Even though maybe your, your circumstances look horrible and, and look, look hopeless. But in Jesus, everything you know, will find its, its proper place. Do not be afraid. Just lean on Jesus and, 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 and trust. Put all your trust into God. So when you come and hear these, these statements... You, you have your hopes, you have even dreams. So when, when we have a relationship, and I want to tell you, all of our relationships must be at some point beneficial. Otherwise, we would not have those relationships. Okay, maybe you say, well, I just want to go and help out people. It's also beneficial. Because if those people don't let you help, you cannot feel how useful you are. So believe me, that's the point. You need relationships. And so the, the best relationship 
And the, the strongest relationship we have actually with Jesus Christ is the one where we put all our trust and hope and dreams. So imagine how the disciples felt on that day, on Friday, on Saturday, on those days. They felt they lost their hopes and dreams. They were mistaken. Somebody, some, something, something you know, unexpected happens and they lost suddenly their faith. The women, can we say they were ready for Easter? They went to the tomb and apparently the empty tomb did not move them to faith. They took the most logical explanation. Somebody took the body. They did not remember what Jesus said before. Not once, but many times that he would, he would be risen on the third day and would walk before them into Galilee and they will, he will meet them in Galilee. What, what changed their attitude? I mean, what changed their, their, their faith? <laughs> that those angels showed up and the angels told them, reminded them the words of Jesus. They needed a special interaction a special relationship with the angels. That interaction suddenly opened their eyes. And then they ran to the disciples, telling them, Jesus is risen, for which the disciples did not believe. The disciples, they were in despair. They wanted to see it, you know, for themselves. So they showed up at the, well, in the tomb, and they thought they were hallucinating. They were going through, again, you know, the grieving process. It, it, it cannot be what happened to the body. To the disciples, I mean to most of them, what it took was that the risen Lord himself had to show up and prove to them that he was alive. I don't know if there are people and I'm just contradicting my statement at the beginning. If there are people for whom the empty tomb is enough, something more is needed to believe in the resurrection. And as for the woman, as for the disciples, it's also for us, we need, if not an angelic, but godly presence to believe Jesus was risen. We need God's voice to realize what Jesus said to the disciples, what we read in the Bible. They are true words. And we can rely on those words. We can't find excuses in grief. Jesus is dead. Because we know that he is not. He's risen. After 2,000 years, we have two ways to look at Easter. It is a historic event to celebrate. And if we look at it at a history, as a, a historic event that happened in history, and uh, and there was this great man with a great movement, with great intentions, with you know, great examples, whose examples and teaching live on, on the centuries. Then we are mistaken. For people who don't believe in the resurrection, Jesus is only an example. He's a hero, you know, whose spirit and teaching lives on. But the problem with that is that without the resurrection, Christianity is only a religion with a form, but without power. So I do believe that for us believers, that Jesus was resurrected in body means that he's more than an example. What does that mean? With an example, you cannot talk to, 
you cannot walk with. But with Jesus Christ, we can talk with, we can walk with, but most importantly, we can know him. Knowing someone requires two things. Time and presence. Time and presence. Time and the presence of that someone. You want to form the relationship. Get deeper in the relationship. Making sure that that relationship is beneficial for both parties. That's why the resurrection of Jesus is so important. The empty tomb is so important. Because we can have a relationship with the living Christ. Not only with a prophet or a great teacher, but with the Son of God himself who lives on forever and ever. Our Easter, uh, Easter is our number one assurance. And I wanted to tell you this, that our suffering in this life is not without meaning. That God's love is always willing to, to act with resurrection power, to transform sorrow into joy, sickness into health, and death into life. Uh, today's message, uh, I wanted to finish uh, in a sense of uh, focus, please, how and what you believe about Easter. Because our society focuses, as you know, Christians, more on Christmas than on Easter. But we are Christians not because of Christmas, but because of Easter. We are Christians because the Lord was risen and gave his life for us. So when at the end of time will come the big destruction, we do not have to die. That was the reason why God sent his son to us sacrificed his son for us and rose him from the dead so that at the end of time we do not have to die. I told you these in the name of the risen Lord, our Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray together. Lord, when we celebrate Easter, this is our joyous celebration. Joyous celebration because Good Friday is behind us. We do understand, Lord, that for us, I don't want to say, Lord, most of us, for everybody, to get to the resurrection, we must go through crucifixion. Thank you, Lord, teaching us that renewed life cannot happen without dying daily for our sins. Thank you, Lord, teaching us that we must grow in character. We cannot use old ways, old patterns. We must die for those things. And thank you, Lord Jesus, to show us the power of your resurrection is not only considered for the life that we will spend together in eternity, but for even this life. Lord, we worship you and praise you in time of pandemic, in time when you did not leave us. You showed us your great love. You showed us your great support. And we know, Lord, that you will keep showing your comfort, your strength, no matter what happened in our life, you are there for us. Thank you, Lord, and we praise you for the support you gave us through scientists, through doctors, through first-liners, first the leaders of our churches. We thank you, Lord, for the members of our congregations, for those you woke up, Lord, from their deep sleep, to realize we should not put our 
hopes and dreams into things we have in this life. But in you, Lord, the risen Lord, through you, Lord, we have the power of resurrection and we enjoy. We enjoy the music of the Holy Spirit that is in us each time we think of you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we can know you. We can walk with you. And we can hold your hands. Bring, Lord, healing to your people, to the world. Bring, Lord, healing and comfort to those who mourn because they lose loved ones. And bring, Lord, comfort and peace to those who suffer of dying these days, lonely in hospitals. Lord, allow our prayers get to the hearts of the people who suffer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now I'm asking you to join Joyce James as she is going to lead us into praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now let us read the dedication together as printed in the bulletin because God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. So let's pray together. God of grace, it is our delight and our devotion to give these gifts to you. All we are and all we have are yours alone. Accept this joyful offering as a token of our abiding love. Use it to bring peace, justice, and comfort to the entire world. Amen. Now let us uh, prepare ourselves for gathering around the Lord's table, even if symbolically, um, but while I'm going down to the Lord's table, I want to remind you, those who join us online, that this is the time to get the elements, a piece of bread, and uh, some juice. Welcome to the Lord's table. When we take the bread, it reminds us of the body of Christ that was broken for us. And when we take the vine, it represents the blood of Christ that was poured out for us. Remember in the Last Supper, and as we are doing church right now, both online and in church, um, <clears throat> it reminds us that we belong to one another, not only physically, you know, that spiritually. Let's see the words of uh, introducing the Holy Communion, which is written and told by the Apostle Paul in the first Corinthians letter in chapter 11 from verse 23 to 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, as we share 
wine and bread together, we hope it would be a meaningful time and a way that would touch our hearts and lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Through Christ, in Christ, and with Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, God, most holy, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to peel the first layer and take the piece of bread, please. This is the bread of life broken for you. Let us peel the second layer. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that through grace we are forgiven and redeemed people. Thank you for the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus. And thank you for the promise of eternal life through the resurrection of Christ. Amen. Now let us sing, Jesus Christ is risen today. This is our congregational singing again. And after that, we will watch uh, the Easter presentation. the video I want to thank everybody parents children uh, to make 
it possible. And also, thank you very much for all of you who joined us this ev uh, evening. Am I tired? Who joined us this morning and uh, the singers and the ashers and all, all of you. And I don't want to use names because I would definitely uh, skip someone. So thank you. We church because you are church and because you are uh, willing to come and do. Yes, David is, is now big nogging. Yes, we are church because we do church. So let me remind you that next week actually I'm off and next Sunday uh, Daniel Simak is going to preach. And of course, we still need prayers um, on the screen. So please let me know at the door if you are willing to read uh, prayers and I can prepare the video for the screen for next Sunday. After the video, I'm coming back here and I will just give you a very short blessing. Let's watch the video now. Good morning and welcome to JJUC News. This is Kathy Buckley. As always, we strive to bring you, our viewers, the news as it happens, on the ground and in the action as it unfolds. As you know, our very own Kimberly Shattuck has been in Jerusalem to observe and report the news of the Passover. Of course, the groundbreaking news in the past 72 hours has been the crucifixion of the Nazarene named Jesus, whom some claim was the Messiah, while others say he is a fraud. Jesus gained popularity over the past 33 years with reports of his miracles and healings, and not to mention his devoted 12 followers whom they call disciples. We are going to join Kimberly live in Jerusalem now to get an update on the events that are unfolding. Kimberly, I understand that it's been a very long night for you. You must be exhausted. But tell us, what is the situation there this morning? Yes, Kathy, to say it's been a long night is an understatement. But I can tell you this, it's been an even longer night for his mother and his followers. They are wrought with grief and emotion and shock as they mourn the loss of Jesus. The scene here yesterday was horrific as we watch the crucifixion of Jesus. I can only imagine, and he was so very young. I remember so clearly the night we reported the birth of Jesus coming into this world. And here we are, 33 years later. Yes, Kathy, it was a night very different from this one. That's for certain. And might I add that you haven't changed a bit in 33 years. Oh, well, thank you. And you don't look so bad yourself. Kimberly, um, from what you told us yesterday, Jesus arrived in Jerusalem just over a week ago to a parade of people shouting Hosanna and singing his praises. How quickly things have changed. Yes, you know, it's really unbelievable, Kathy. I was there on the streets myself when he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, no less. People there, they threw palms on the streets and, and paved the way for Jesus. And then just a few days ago, the atmosphere changed considerably. And there we were, ready to watch his crucifixion. What could have happened to have them turn on Jesus this way? I mean, after all, so many believed he was the Messiah. And yes, that's true, Kathy, but Actually, um, I have been waiting outside the palace gates to seek an opportunity to speak with the governor, Pontius Pilate. I'm sure he... Oh, wait. Th there he is now. Excuse me. 
excuse me, Governor, can you tell the people what happened? Why did they change their minds and go against Jesus? I'm a busy man. I don't have time for this. Step away from the governor or I'll have you arrested. Please, Governor, just a moment of your time to talk to the viewers. Very well. The people turned against Jesus because they were listening to their peeps. They were just of Jesus because so many people followed and listened to his teachings. Well, what about you? Why did you let this happen? You are very foolish to ask that question, but very well. I was only doing my job. I saw that he was innocent, but I had no choice. The priests had the mob convinced they wanted him dead. Do you have something to say? Governor, we must go or you'll be late for your appointment. Hmm. Well, there you have it, Kathy. You heard it straight from the governor's mouth. They wanted Jesus dead, and well, they got their wish, didn't they? Yes, it seems that way. Although it's difficult to understand, especially since all accounts point to the fact that Jesus was a man of peace, not war. Yes, and that's true, Kathy, but it might be exactly what is the problem. Interesting. Tell excuse us, Kimberly, me. what do... Excuse me. I overheard what you were saying about Jesus. You see, the word is that the people were waiting for a Messiah, a king that would gallop in on a horse, ready to take on the Roman Empire. They were not expecting the p humble, peaceful man that Jesus was. Tell us more. Uh, what's your name, sir, and, and how did you know Jesus? My name is Joseph of Arimathea. I listened to his teachings. I believed he was the true Messiah. So I made sure he had a proper burial. I took his body to the tomb for his mother and his friends. Oh my, sir, that is so very kind of you. But uh, it was the least I could do. But I must be on my way. May God go with you. Thank you, sir. And may God go with you as well. What a heroic thing to do. Jesus certainly had devoted followers. What about the others? Have you had any conversations with those closest to him? No, Kathy. Actually, I have not been able to locate anyone yet, but I've heard that they're in hiding because they are afraid for their lives. Oh. Follow me, Kathy. Um, I'm going to go speak to these women here. Uh, excuse me, ladies. Uh, may I have a moment of your time? We have been waiting to talk with you, but we are a little afraid. We are followers of Jesus, and we love him. We have been listening to his teaching for many months. Our brother Darius was paralyzed for many years, but Jesus touched him, and just like that, he got up and walked. It was a miracle. We believed that he was the Messiah. He was the Son of God. Jesus was the Son of God, we are heartbroken, even though we are not from the Jewish descent. We are going to follow Jesus anywhere. Ladies, I can definitely, I can see your pain and, and your sorrow, but tell me, what, what makes you believe that he was the Son of God? We have witnessed the many miracles, like the time he turned a few fish and loaves into enough food to feed an army. That was incredible. I never met anyone like him before. He loved everyone and told us many stories about love and forgiveness. Come, sisters. Jesus is gone now. We must continue our journey to go home to Galilee. We will mourn for him and tell our friends and family about this man who was the Messiah. 
Ladies, I want to thank you for sharing your stories with our viewers and please, I, I wish you safe travels on your journey and, and God bless each one of you. Well, Kathy, you heard the most incredible stories that these women just shared with us now. Indeed. Kimberly, how ironic that we are covering the news on the day that Jesus came into the world and now he has left it. Were you able to find out where Joseph of Arimathea took his body? Yes, Kathy. I overheard the soldiers talking earlier and I'm on my, my way right there. But, but wait, uh, let's listen and see what's happening here. I am. Um, he's not here. I understand what happened. I don't know, John. But Mary Magdalene said two women at the tomb said he had risen. Risen? What does that mean, Thomas? I don't know, John. I don't believe it. This couldn't walk away. Let's get out of here before somebody finds us. But, but, but wait, I, I, I have more... <sighs> well, <laughs> Kathy, they certainly wasted no time getting out of here. I see that. Kimberly, what do you suppose they meant? He has risen. Kimberly, it looks like you have company. And the women are obviously very excited about something. Yes, Kathy, let's get the inside scoop. Um, excuse me, ladies. Can you please tell the viewers what is happening here? Yes, my son is no longer here. It's just as the prophets foretold. I did not recognize him at first and would not have believed it was him, but then Jesus spoke to me. What? How can this be? I mean, he just died on the cross hours ago. It is true. We looked inside the tomb, and Jesus is gone. It is as Mary said. Jesus is risen. Bye. My soul, my soul rejoices. My son lives. There is hope for us all. Then Jesus said to me, "Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Instead." Go to my brothers and sisters and tell them, I'm ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Praise me to God in the highest, the Messiah lives. Come on ladies, we must tell everyone the good news. Yes, tell them that I've seen the living Christ. for words right now. Well, that is definitely something I thought I would never hear you say. Touche, Kathy. But seriously, can this be true? Can it be true? Have we just captured the most groundbreaking news of all time? Yes, indeed. And we have followed and reported the stories throughout his lifetime. We have been truly blessed to have witnessed his coming into this world and now his death and resurrection. Kimberly, what has started out as a day filled with great sorrow and sadness has developed into one of the most joyous days known to mankind. I believe you are right, Kathy. Jesus Christ is truly the Son of God, the Prince of Peace, the Lamb of God. This is Kimberly Shattuck reporting to you live from Jerusalem. And I want to sign off this evening by saying, Jesus Christ is risen today. Hallelujah. Blessings to each and every one of you.
who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen. That's my sister. Come see the place where Jesus died. Then go quickly to tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. My dear brothers and sisters, go in peace, love and care for one another in the name of Christ. And the blessing of the ever-present God be upon us. The power of the risen Christ be within you. And the wisdom and gentleness of the Holy Spirit surround you and guide you both now and forevermore. Amen. Happy Easter to everyone. <laughs>